you are showing astrology, these Babas, one Baba, he charges 2,000 rupees per seat in his hall. And there's a huge crowd. And somebody says, Babaji, I am having differences with my wife. He says, samosa khao. <laughs> so and so says, nigga pakoda khao. <laughs> Spreading superstition. You know, astrology is pure nonsense. It is superstition. Come back. Because just use your common sense. How can the movement of the stars and planets decide whether you will become a doctor or engineer or a lawyer or a journalist or whether you will die at the age of 50 or 80? Is there any correlation between the two? Astrology is pure superstition. But so many channels I see, TV channels showing astrology. You know, the question is, should the media go down to the low level of intellect of 50-90% of the people and perpetuate that low intellect? Or should the media raise the intellectual level of our people to a higher level? The media was born in Europe in the, uh, say the 18th century. Historically, that is the origin of the media. It was born as an organ of the people against feudal oppression. Because at that time, all the organs of power were in the hand of the feudal authorities, the kings and the aristocrats and all. The, so the people in their fight against feudalism had to create new organs, which would represent their interests. And the media was one of the powerful organs which the people in Europe created, in France, England, etc to fight against the feudals. Of course, there was no electronic media in those days. And even the print media was not in the form of daily newspapers. It was in the form of pamphlets, booklets, etc. But that was used by the people in the fight against the feudals. So the media arose as an organ of the people against feudal oppression. It represented the voice of the future as contrasted to the established organs of power which wanted to preserve the status quo and not permit any change. So the great writers like Voltaire and Rousseau, Thomas Paine, uh, John Wilkes, Junius wrote for the people and they helped in the transition of Europe from a feudal society to a modern society. They played a great role uh, in helping society get over this transition and come into the modern age. Voltaire, Rousseau, you may have heard their names, Thomas Paine, John Wilkes. So the Indian media should also be playing this role of helping people so that we, uh, India becomes a prosperous country with people having decent lives. And all these evils of poverty, unemployment, and lack of health care, Management, etc., abolished forever. This is the role that media should be playing. But when I say this, the media furiously has been attacking me that you are against freedom of speech. So, freedom of speech means diverting attention of the people from the real issues, which are the economic issues, the harsh economic issues of poverty, unemployment, lack of health care, malnourishment, etc. These are the real issues. But the media diverts attention from these real, real issues to non-issues like cricket and Bollywood and astrology, etc. This is the mischievous role that media has been playing. Just to earn profits, they are not bothered about the people. They are in the hands of the big corporates who just want profits. It's a shameful act the way the Indian media has been behaving. I have been protesting against it. You know, just I, after I became a chairman of press council in uh, October 2011, I, I was interviewed by Karan Thapa. You can see on YouTube, the devil's advocate. He asked me about the media. I said, firstly, the media diverts attention of the people from the real issues, which are the economic issues, to non-issues. You know, for years and years, you know, the lakhs of farmers were committing suicide in Maharashtra and parts of Andhra Pradesh, even in Karnataka, in Gujarat, the media would not report it. What 
what were they reporting? A fashion, let me fashion parade in Bombay. 500 journalists were, uh, uh, were attending that and reporting on that fashion parade. And the farmers who made the, the cotton which those models in that fashion parade were wearing, they were at the same time committing suicide in large numbers in, in, in the, um, uh, this uh, area of Maharashtra, Vidarbha area of Maharashtra. Just one hour flight away from Bombay. That was not covered at all. For years and years, the media would not cover the farmer suicide, would not report on the farmer suicide. When lacks were taking place, it was a great journalist called P. Sainath, I think who is from your state or Andhra Pradesh. You know, hats off to that man. He insisted, he brought it out when all others, all other media people shamelessly refused to report on it. He was the courageous man who reported on it. And because of him, we came to know that lakhs of farmers are committing suicide because farming has become uneconomic. They've taken loans from banks, but they can't repay the loan because farming is becoming uneconomic and there's lack of monsoon and so on. So the land has been taken away and they have committed suicide. In your state also, should media not be reporting all this? Or you just report about life of film star and astrology and cricket and so on. Sheena murder, that is a big it, real issue before the nation. Not unemployment, not poverty, not hunger. Sheena murder is the most important. So, uh, see, the, so far as the print media is concerned, there is the Press Council of India Act, made in 1967. It was repealed during emergency, but again introduced in 1978. I was the chairman of the Press Council for three years from 2011 to 2014. Now, that <coughs> no doubt uh, <coughs> provides for hearing complaints against uh, some media person or uh, organization if he has done something wrong against journalistic ethics. But then the press council is a toothless body. It has, it has no power to impose any punishment. So when I became chairman of the press council in October 2011, I went to the then Prime Minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh. I said, sir, you uh, give, give us some power because and by amending the press council act, because the only power is ad admonition or censor, which is nothing. Give us at least the power to impose fine and also in there's some extreme, uh, extremely obnoxious thing has been done by the media, the power to suspend their license also, at least for a short time. And I said that uh, the, the electronic media should also be brought under the Press Council Act because Press Council only deals with the print media, not with the electronic media. But when the Press Council Act was made in 1967, there was no electronic media in India. So I said now it is very important that the electronic media should also be regulated because TV has become a very important part of our lives. And there should be some regulation. This self-regulation is an oxymoron. It means nothing, self-regulation is no regulation. So I told the Prime Minister that two, two amendments should be made in the Press Council Act. One that the electronic media should also be brought within the purview of this council. It may be renamed Media Council instead of Press Council. And also we should be given some powers, powers to punish for, um, uh, for breach of journalistic ethics. Supposing you defame somebody, supposing you incite communal riot, why should you not be punished for that? The electronic media people say, no, we should not be regulated. We will self self-regulate. They have some body of self-regulation. Self-regulation is no regulation. It is an oxymoron. It means nothing. It is an oxymoron. So I told the Prime Minister that please amend the constitution. He said, I'll look into it, but he did nothing. Because these politicians are afraid of the media. They want to keep the media happy for their own interest. So, uh, 
I have been uh, constantly talking that there should be regulation. And I said, look, if some powers are given to the press council, you can call it the media council, <coughs> it will not in any way affect you because you know the way how press council operates. It has a chairman and it has 28 members, of which 20 are representatives of the press. And they are not appointed by the government or by the chairman, but they are elected by the press organizations. So 20 out of the 28 are from the press and all decisions are taken by majority vote. I can't decide a case myself. Often uh, the majority uh, did not agree with me and I respected the views of the majority. So it is a democratic, it is a, a sort of a, a form of self-regulation itself. It's a judgment by your peers. So why should the press be afraid of it? And I said if, you're, if television is also brought under the purview of the <coughs> press council, and it is renamed media council, then there can be 20 members of the television uh, TV also, elected by their own organizations. So uh, uh, it will be a judgment by your peers, and just like the bar council, it is a body which can suspend the license of a lawyer or cancel his license for professional misconduct. But the members of the bar council are all lawyers who have been elected by other lawyers, not, not appointed by the government. So it is a judgment by your peers. <coughs> Similarly, the press council is like that. 20 out of the 28 members of the press council are elected by the press bodies. Five are, of course, members of parliament, two from Raj Sabha, three from Lok Sabha, and the remaining three, one from uh, Bar, Bar, uh, Bar Council of India, one from UGC, and one from uh, Sahitya Academy. <laughs> but vast majority of the members of press council are media people and elected by other media people. So what's your problem? You, you decide. I'm not the chairman is not going to uh, give any punishment. You yourself decide whether this person has done something grossly improper in uh, gross breach of journalistic ethics. <coughs> but they totally oppose even this proposal, although it is very reasonable. You know, in, in, in England, the Levison, Lord Levison report recommended that the members of the press council should not be media persons. Well, my uh, suggestion is that most 90% should be media person. You yourself decide whether one of you is guilty or not. Let not the government decide. I am against government control. But what objection can you be have if you yourself uh, decide whether one of your colleagues has done something very wrong, very improper? But the uh, uh, TV people are not prepared even for that. They want total freedom. Everybody should be regulated, lawyers should be regulated, doctors, judges. Chartered accountants, but media should not be regulated. At least, not the uh, electronic media and even the print media has no uh, check because <coughs> the press council can only censor or admonish, which is nothing. We can't even find. So I I think that the uh, uh, amendment should be made. The two amendments I I proposed, but let us see because. Nobody, these politicians are scared of the media. They want to keep the media happy. Uh, there was this uh, press objectionable matter that that is citing somebody for offence, the court to commit a crime. You can be punished for that. Of course, that, for that already there is, uh, there are laws that if media incites for cri crime or defames or instigates a communal riot, they can be punished under various provisions of the Indian Penal Code. <coughs> but you know, these trials take years and years to decide. 